morning. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are in the kitchen again. We are going to make a pan of cinnamon rolls. Unfortunately, they're not for us. They are for a sweet family who just had a baby. Um, tonight I'm going to go and take them a meal, a nice hot supper, um, salad, bread, that dessert, and then I'm also going to take this pan of cinnamon rolls also for them to have for breakfast tomorrow morning and the next morning as well, just to make things a little bit easier for them for the next couple of mornings. So um, I'm going to finish my coffee and my breakfast, get the kids started on their schoolwork and clean up from after breakfast and then we'll get started. So grab a cup of coffee, grab an apron and we'll see you in just a few minutes. And um, let me know if you try this recipe, they really are truly the best cinnamon rolls ever. And I will show you a picture of the uh, recipe at the end of the video so that you don't have to jot anything down, you don't have to remember anything. Just stay tuned and you can screenshot it at the end. Okay, everybody, we're back. I've got the breakfast cleaned up. I have micro band sanitized this countertop because I'm gonna need it to, to knead and roll out some dough. It's ready to go. I've got pretty much all my ingredients ready and I've got my recipe. Again, like I said, I will put a picture of this at the end of the video, so be careful, be, stay tuned. You don't have to worry about trying to keep up and write it all down. But I will tell you, it is two pages. Is this page and this page. So there's gonna be two pictures. If you need to screenshot, there are two, they are different. So first things first, we're gonna get some warm milk in our bowl. It's just a cup of milk. I've heated it in the microwave for about 45 seconds or so. You don't want it hot, you just want it warm. Okay, to that we're gonna add one tablespoon of sugar. Okay, but don't put your sugar up because you're gonna need it again in just a minute. First things first, we have to get the yeast proofing. And then a tablespoon also of yeast. This is active dry yeast. It is not instant yeast. Make sure you use active dry, not instant. It's a big deal because those measurements are way different. If you use instant and you do a tablespoon like the recipe calls for, you're gonna mess this up. I get this in bulk. Jason bought this for me on, I think on Amazon during quarantine. And he got, he didn't know what he's ordering. He got two huge bricks of it. <laughs> For like 10 bucks, which is a really good deal, but he didn't know it was a good deal. And so I stuck one in the freezer. I opened one, put the other one in the freezer, and I just opened the second one not long ago. So it keeps a really long time. Store it in your refrigerator or your freezer if you're not ready to store it in the fridge yet. Put this up. Go ahead and stir this together so that you can get it dissolving. I know you guys can't really see very well. I try to get most of the yeast off the sides of the bowl and down into the milk, but I don't guess it really matters. That's just me. All right, now we're gonna set a timer for five minutes and let this proof and get the rest of the ingredients together in that five minutes so that it makes things go a whole lot faster. So set the timer. Five minutes proofing and we'll be right back. The timer is about to go off. I've got all of my ingredients. I have my two eggs. I've got my melted butter, my vanilla sitting over here. I've got my sugar and then my dry ingredients here. I've already measured out my flour, salt and cinnamon into here. This is proofing. I don't know if you can really tell. It's starting to puff up. When the timer goes off, we're going to add right there. Okay, and I got I grabbed the trash can over here to make it easier for me. And Willow was put up. She was wild earlier. So we're going to go ahead and add in our two room temperature eggs. One. I didn't wash with 
soap, so I'm using a paper towel instead of my hand towel over here. I'll wash the soap in just a second. Um, but I'm about to knead the dough, which has raw eggs in it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then I'll wash my hands. So we're gonna add the melted butter. It's not hot, you know, I melted it earlier before I did the milk and the yeast and the sugar. So it's warm, but not hot. And then we're gonna have a half a cup of sugar, one fourth, one half, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. And I, that's why I go ahead with my dry ingredients because I need a teaspoon, excuse me, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I wanna go ahead and measure out my dry ingredients before I do this vanilla. So then I want vanilla in my salt and I don't want it in my cinnamon. And I don't wanna to have to wash this umpteen times. So that's done. So what I'm gonna do is had set my, I don't know why I rinsed that off because it was just sitting in the measuring cup that had the milk in it. And I just set it down in the measuring cup. Why I rinsed that off, I really don't know. We're having one of those homeschool days. Raise your hand in the comments if you're a homeschooler. Raise your hand if your mama said there'd be days like this. In one of those days, it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you homeschool. It's great, don't get me wrong, but it's not all homeschool. It's not all rainbows. Okay, now I'm done with this. Set it back in that measuring cup. Now we're gonna use the mixer. I'm gonna see if I can get you guys a better angle. I need to move my sugar because I'm done with my sugar. We're gonna use the dough hook. Okay, now we're gonna start slowly adding this in. I hope you can see once this is down, you should be able to, and what it's supposed to look like. So this is my flour, my teaspoon of salt, my teaspoon of cinnamon. So that's the secret to it. The cinnamon is in the dough, not just in the filling. So we're gonna do this. Turn it on kind of a low speed. And I'm gonna see if I can do this without making a mess. Add in spoonfuls at a time. This part does kind of take a while. Because <clears throat> you want to go slow. Because you don't want to explode it everywhere. But also, you want it to incorporate all the way and not just be stuck to the sides of the bowl. Then after this is all incorporated, we're gonna turn it out onto this countertop, knead it just a couple of times and stick it in a bowl, cover it and let it rise. So I'm gonna get the rest of this in and then I'll let you see what it should look like and if it doesn't look like that, how to correct it. Okay, so I got, the, I got all this in and I grabbed my flour just in case. Yep, okay. You can see it's not pulling away from the sides of the bowl. Okay. You know what? Let me get you a better angle. Okay, I thought maybe this was better. I got all of it in there. But typically this is going to happen. It's all incorporated, but you see it's not pulling away from the sides of the bowl. So now you need to add more flour. Just like a spoonful at a time. So I just get it. This is like a big serving spoon. It's not... A tablespoon or anything. So I just do this. Sorry, that was loud. Let it incorporate. See, now it's starting to pull away, but it's not all the way incorporated yet. It's probably not enough flour. But you have to be careful because you don't want to overwork it because then you'll have dry, yucky cinnamon rolls. You want them to be almost gooey. Isn't that what you want in a cinnamon roll? Gooey cinnamon rolls? You 
see how it's all on the um, hook, the dough hook? Most of it is there and not on the bowl. And now you can see the bottom of the bowl. So we're getting somewhere. So how you tell is you stop it, pull this up, and if you touch it and it doesn't stick to your finger, and it kind of bounces back like that, then you're ready. See, it's still stuck to the bowl, but not by much. So I can still touch it and it not really stick to my finger. So now we're ready to turn it out. Okay, so now we're ready to turn it out. So I'm gonna flour my hands and get this off of the dough hook. It doesn't really stick to my finger, but once you start really handling it, it does. So I go ahead and flour my hands. Get it off the hook. I don't want to waste any dough. It's too good. Get the hook out of my way. Like that. Lower that. I try to get most of it out. Sometimes I just put flour in there. If you don't get it all out, it's not the end of the world, but you know me. If you watch my channel for any length of time, you know I don't like to waste things. So, it's good. I don't need a lot of room. I'll move the mixer in a little bit, but I, and you're not gonna, like I said, you don't wanna handle it a lot. You just wanna incorporate, make sure it's all, the same consistency throughout. It's really soft at this point. It feels like Play-Doh. You don't want it to be real dry or really hard. You just wanna knead it just for a minute or so. And then you're gonna form it into a ball. Ooh, there's some dough there. Get in there, dough. It was hiding in a thing of flour. You're just gonna get it into a ball. how it's not stuck to my hands. Now we've got our bowl and our towel. I'm gonna spray it with vegetable oil. And that is the last of that vegetable oil. All right, so we're just gonna put our bowl, our ball of dough in the bowl and then cover it with a tea towel. It's just a very, very thin dish towel. As you can see, it gets used for cinnamon rolls a lot. There's cinnamon stains on it. Don't mind that. This is my cinnamon roll towel. Um, doesn't get used for anything else. Now, you might hear the dishwasher running. I had to wash the shoes, but it's perfect because when this dishwasher is running, hot steam comes up and this countertop gets kind of warm, which is really what I want because this needs to rise in a warm place and my husband keeps the house a little chilly. Plus it's kind of cloudy and rainy today, which it's chilly outside and windy. So it's even a little cooler in here. I'm gonna leave the flour mess because when we this is done rising, it needs to rise for one hour. So I'm gonna set the timer for an hour while this rises. And then I'm gonna move the mixer out of the way and we'll be ready to roll it out. So in this hour, while this is rising, I'm gonna go over here to the other side, get their meal going, their um, tortellini going, cut up their salad stuff, get all that together so that it's ready to go and kind of clean up flour, sugar, that kind of thing and get my filling ready. And then I will meet you back here in one hour. All right, you guys, time to roll them out. All right, so I've got my filling here, the butter, cinnamon, and brown sugar in a bowl. I just simply take a fork. Let me move this out of the way. 
I just simply take a fork and mash it together. Kind of like when, you know, you saw my banana cake recipe, same concept. Sometimes, like I said, it is a little chilly in here. And especially today with it being kind of overcast, cloudy and rainy. So sometimes, even though the butter is soft and it is room temperature, I will warm it just a little bit in the microwave. So why don't we do that? Just for about 10 seconds or so, that's better. You don't want it to be melted butter. You just want to be able to incorporate the brown sugar and the cinnamon into the butter. Do you guys like cinnamon rolls? I love them. Any way I can get them. But these are absolutely my favorite. This is not my recipe. I did not come up with it. it. Again, I found it on Pinterest. Most of my recipes I either find on Pinterest or they have just been my family recipes passed down generation to generation that I grew up eating and making. I don't think I've ever made up a recipe of my own. All right, so that's what you want it to look like. You want it to look like sand. Wet sand, basically. And probably right after I get it rolled out, I'll warm this up one more time just to make it easier to spread. So we're gonna set this over here. I'm gonna check out the dough. Mmm. Look how big and pretty. All right, so we're gonna flour our surface, which I left some of it over here. Okay. You're gonna hold on to your towel because we got it. They're gonna have to rise again. I'm gonna set it right here on this nice warm stove where I had just made marinara with it. We're gonna dump this out. No longer need our bowl, but I do need flour. Dust it with some flour. And I don't really roll as much as I pat. I do roll some. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Maybe if I turn on a light. Is that better? That's a little bit better. Okay, so I pat it out mostly. You want it to be in a rectangle. So I try to pat it to the rectangle shape and then flour it really good and then flip it over and then I roll it. This is why I micro band the kitchen. Yes, it's gonna be baked in an oven at 350 degrees. So whatever is on there probably will die, but it's just a thing of me. All right, so you don't want it real super thin, okay? I want it to be about like that, if you can see. But make sure it's as even as you can get it. Now we're gonna do the filling, but I'm gonna run it through the microwave really quick. And now I'm gonna grab a pan. And spray it. So that's ready to go. Y'all, I'm riding the struggle bus today. See, now it's all nice and like this. It's not completely melted. Still, it's just like wet sand, basically. I'm just gonna quick pour it on. <laughs> this is the good part. I'll have to show you when it gets to be fall, how to make this into a pumpkin version. 
pumpkin cinnamon rolls in the fall with the cream cheese icing. Those are my favorite. Okay. You can use a knife if you want to or an offset spatula. I don't, it's a waste of time. So I take my rings off, set them over there, and I just go in with my hands. Mainly like the, the heel of my hand and use that like as a spatula. I just spread it pretty close to the edge. You don't want it to go all the way to the edge because then when you roll it up, it's gonna squish out but you want it pretty close. And again, just uniform thickness throughout because the goal is to have every bite of cinnamon roll have filling in it. Like this. Probably should have turned the hot water on first. When I pick up any clumps that fell off or flew off, just throw them in there. It's okay, a flower gets in there because it's gonna be rolled up, right? Okay, let me wash this off. and then they have to rise. So you're gonna start away from you and roll towards you. So you're just gonna fold it over. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but fold it all the way, kind of like the Pioneer Woman calls it the typewriter method, like this. Now you can see what I'm doing. And I don't roll it all the way to the edge. I roll it close. And then I pick this edge up and I bring it up to the top and try to pinch it. It doesn't really stay together, but it'll be enough to where you can roll it over in just a second. It's ugly, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now you're gonna roll it so that this is on the, this is down, so it'll hold it closed. Okay, now this is where I kind of squish it and try to make them the same, make it the whole log, like the same thickness. Because I don't want like little bitty um, half rolled up cinnamon roll on the ends. Okay, so squish your dough, because remember it's like Play-Doh consistency. And then you're gonna get a serrated knife And then this is gonna be 12 cinnamon rolls. So I eyeball it. If you just feel like you need to get a tape measure out, you do you. But I just eyeball it. So I go straight in the middle and cut it in half is how I do it. Okay, so we have six and six. So then I'm gonna cut each of these in half. So I know this is three, 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 and three, right? So that means if each of these is three, I just have to cut these into thirds. Like that. Okay, almost there. sprayed pan and yes there is a system to it okay so I take start with the center and I work my way out this end one and this end one are gonna be the two center cinnamon rolls in the center of the pan these I start in the corners and work my way to the center so I'm gonna get this one and I'm put it in the corner and I put it in the pan with the little seam side towards the corner so that when it, they start to rise and start to bake, they'll unfold a little bit and the pan will hold them in place. So 
So seam side of the cinnamon roll towards the pan. This corner, this corner. Then I go middle. this and then I go here here that and like that and then these go in the middle and I don't put the cut side down and leave this up I put this side down like this And then here, actually that's gonna come undone. So I'm gonna make these two seam sides face each other. See? So you can see where all the seams are up against the pan so that when they start to rise and unfold, the pan is gonna hold them closed. So I'm gonna leave them right here on top of this nice warm dishwasher get my towel that I covered the bowl with earlier, cover these, they have to rise for 30 minutes, then we bake them. Set your timer, we'll be right back. All right, so I just checked on the cinnamon rolls. They're looking good, they're smelling amazing. They've got about nine minutes left. So while I'm waiting on those, I'm gonna go ahead and make the icing so that as soon as they come out, I can put the icing on them and it kind of melts a little bit and goes down in, mm, so good. So here's how we do the icing. It's really easy, really quick, just um, five ingredients, that's it. You need two cups of powdered sugar, half a teaspoon of vanilla, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Yes, salt, trust me on that block of cream cheese softened, a half a stick of butter softened. I've already got that in the mixer. And this is how you put it together. All right, so I've got the cream cheese block and the half a stick of butter. It's been softening. I just went ahead and stuck it in the mixer. Don't mind this, this is cream cheese. When I dropped it in there, it stuck to the side of the bowl and I had to break it down in there. So there's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start kind of creaming those two together. You don't have to do a whole lot while it's going. Let me go ahead and add my eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Yes, trust me, salt. Okay, half a teaspoon of vanilla. Sometimes I don't even measure it, I just eyeball it. You know how I am. And then I'm gonna scrape the bowl. Sorry, Willow is just wild today. I think it must be a full moon. Colson's not really behaving so well today. Willow's not really behaving so well today. You know. Okay. Get all of it off the spatula. All right, now I'm gonna put the powdered sugar in. Once I get all this in, I scrape the bowl one more time, and then I just turn it up really high and kind of whip it. And then I'll bring my spoon rest over here. I'm gonna scrape it one more time. See? It doesn't look like a lot, and when you go to put it on the cinnamon rolls, you're gonna think, this is not enough icing. Maybe I should have doubled it, but that's not the case. Just trust me on it and put, them on, put it on there. Like I said, the warm cinnamon rolls will kind of melt the butter and the cream cheese in this icing, and it just sort of doesn't liquefy, but it makes it way more spreadable and you can get it in there. Okay. 
Now I'll just turn them really high. All right. That's it, see? Beautiful cream cheese icing. Now this is ready. So all we have to do is when they come out of the oven, ah, spread this on there, then let them cool for just a little bit so the icing can kind of set before I cover them with foil. You do not have to refrigerate these. In fact, I would recommend that you did not refrigerate them. Just let them sit out at room temperature because if you do, they're gonna dry out and you'll be very, very sorry. All right, that's all you gotta do for the cream cheese icing. Fast and simple. All right, now we gotta get the cinnamon rolls out. These are out. Look how yummy. Now I'm going to take my Okay, these are out. Look how yummy. Now I'm gonna take my icing and I'm just gonna kind of drop globs of it on like this. And the heat of the cinnamon rolls will start to really soften the icing to where I can spread it. Okay. And then I'm just very gentle. I try not to touch the cinnamon rolls themselves with the spatula. I just want the icing to go on them. See how it's starting to melt? And I just go all the way to the edge of the pan because once these cool and the icing sets, it will kind of seal in the moisture and they won't dry out as bad. Unless Jason did it. All right, so now these are all iced. So I'm gonna let these cool right here and then I will put foil on them after they're completely, completely cool so that the icing doesn't stick to the foil. And then that's it for cinnamon rolls. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me today, making these cinnamon rolls. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. I hope you try this recipe. You will not be sorry. I'm, I promise. They freeze beautifully. You can um, pull them out of the oven just like I did and you can either freeze them without icing and then just make your icing. Sometimes I do that, I'll, I'll just put foil on them after they're cool, before I put icing on, and then make your icing and put it in a, a quart freezer bag, Ziploc bag, get all the air out, seal it up, and then just set it on top of the foil and just stick them in the freezer. And then when you have like out of town company or you know you're gonna have a really busy morning, you can pull them out the night before, 
they thaw overnight just like bread thaws overnight the icing thaws overnight and then you can always pop them in a warm oven to get them warm and then just snip the corner of that bag off and then squirt the icing on them and they're good to go they're wonderful they freeze great but if you do freeze them i would wrap them in foil twice just to kind of prevent freezer burn or even saran wrap first then foil twice um, just if you do that, remember to take the saran wrap off before you slide them in a warm oven. That's how you make cinnamon rolls. I hope you enjoy this. Hit the like button if you like it and let me know. Comment down below if you make them and how your family likes them. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.